Credo Mobile fights hard to enact progressive change and defeat regressive policies. Majority Report viewers can get up to 350 bucks credit towards switching to the only progressive phone company. Go to credomobile.com forward slash Sam right now. I went through this quite a bit on yesterday's um, uh, better half of the program. I want to touch on it again today because we're seeing more and more written about this. There is a lot of question as to the implications. Now, when we talk about busting through the debt ceiling, understand that the government takes in about 65 percent of what it pays out in revenue. The other 35 percent is borrowed. We issue treasury bonds. People buy those bonds. I think it's about every 15 days or so, the treasury pays out interest on those bonds. Bonds mature, some get uh, renewed, but uh, in the meantime, interest is paid out. The first payments of uh, uh, of those interest payments, I believe, come up October 31st. Now, the U.S. government, the Treasury, pays two million bills a day. Two million bills a day of this type. Um, And it does so through two different agencies. The Bureau of Public Debt and the Financial Management Service, which... um, Broadly speaking, I mean, there are a bunch of other agencies involved, but broadly speaking, these two agencies, the Bureau of Public Debt handles the U.S. sovereign debt payments through a system called Fedwire. The Financial Management Service handles all of the payments to agencies, vendors through their automated clearinghouse. All of this is computerized. The Republicans, many of them are claiming that you could simply prioritize the uh, payments where you would basically pay off all the interest coming through the debt. The biggest payments are going to be uh, October 15th and then uh, November 1st. Um, or I should say October uh, uh, 31st and November, uh, November 15th. But nevertheless, there's still payments that you're paying out on a daily basis. This is a binary process. You would have to shut down all payments to everyone else in the government, including like Social Security and Medicare. It is unclear whether or not the Treasury has even the statutory authority to do this. But let's presume for a moment that they did have the ability. By executive order, they did it in some fashion. Who knows? They found the statutory ability to do it. Let's also assume that they have come up with a plan to do what they have never done ever in the past. Then you have to assume that they're going to be able to execute that plan flawlessly. We know in 1979 there was some glitch. As there was some question about raising the debt ceiling, there was some glitch. It caused about $122 million uh, worth of payments to be slowed by 24 hours. It created an instantaneous rise in uh, uh, interest rates. It It reverberated through the economy for three months. So let's, so let's assume those three things. They find the statutory authority. They have already come up with a plan to do what they've never done before. And then they execute that plan flawlessly. Assuming all that for the sake of argument. The fact of the matter is they would not have the money to pay for the rest of the government. Bloomberg has a piece on this uh, today. Recession looms if Treasury uses tools to prevent a debt default. In other words, even if they service the uh, interest payments on the debt. You would still get a recession because the cutting would be so huge. This is according to Jim O'Neill, former chairman of Goldman Sachs Asset Management, who's now a Bloomberg View columnist. It would put the U.S. back into recession. $175 $175 billion less in government spending during November alone. 
If the government does avoid fault, the default, that wouldn't mean the economy would escape a recession, said Michael Faroli, chief U.S. economist for J.P. Morgan Chase. A slump would be certain to follow if the choice is between a default and cutting other outlays to avoid one. In the first case, he said we'd have a recession and a financial crisis. In the second case, we'd have a recession. This is basically what I was saying yesterday. We either have a economic and financial crisis or just an economic uh, crisis. A 4% shock that is based upon what the, um, what the cutback in spending would mean for the economy. In a 2% growth economy, is very much recessionary, says Michael uh, Hansen, senior U.S. economist at Bank of America in New York. That's the bottom line. All of this talk of it's not a big deal and this and that is either just a lie or they're deluded. And why would they lie? Because they want to make it clear that we just may be crazy enough to do this. With all that said, I still think primary concern is going to be watch out for that six-week extension that takes us into December, which is the metaphorical equivalent of those uh, one-cheek sneaks that you get on a Friday, <laughs> as Janine used to call them. When they want to drop that silent uh, but deadly news, that's when uh, the grand bargain would be struck. And that's why it is so important now uh, to, to register and to continue to pressure Congress people, senators, do not cut Social Security, do not cut Medicare. I've talked ad nauseum at the, on the failure of the experiment of the 401k. How we have to the extent that we have any need to do any entitlement reform, it is to expand Social Security and, frankly, to drop Medicare to 55. Maybe a buy-in is fine. That's the reality, folks. This is the, the, the threats uh, for an, a progressive agenda are huge at this time because it's so easy to say, like, I had no choice. These guys were going to drive us off a cliff. But we know, again, those two things in President Obama's bucket list. One, to de-weaponize the debt ceiling. And two, to get entitlement reform. Everything else is just commentary, as they say.